Now I'm going to hit record here. All right, so this is Mr. Dennis with My Wildlife Harvest, and uh, I wanted him to come on and talk about what he's got going on with it. So fire away, buddy. Okay, so basically I, I had an app built for, it's kind of like a journal or a diary for hunters, fishermen, trappers, because it all started out this winter when somebody asked me how many deer I've shot in my lifetime. And unfortunately, I don't make notches on my gun or I kept records. Yeah, I could go dig out all my deer antlers and tell you, yeah, how many bucks I've shot. But any, any story behind them? Probably not. So this app, the way it works is once you've downloaded it, you have a 30-day free trial. After that, it's $24.95 or $24.99 a year. But once you've created an account, you can go in there and you can create any category you want. Like I've got categories for archery deer and deer with a gun and bears and turkeys and grouse, anything you want to create. You create your own category and it's only personal to you. I can't see what people create for categories as a builder. All I can see is their account that they put in, their email address and stuff like that. But after you create the account, Let's say, what do you hunt the most in your life? I'm I'm a white-tailed deer hunter growing up in South Louisiana. That's pretty much all we could we had unless we unless we had alligator tags. Then moving to Oklahoma, still white tail, but I have many more options here for because we have mule deer, we have long, uh, pronghorn, you have bear, and you can draw draw for elk. So like, but mainly I'm a white tail guy. Okay, so basically we'll say that you you create a category for white tail with a gun. Mm -hmm. and you go out and you shoot one when you most people when they shoot a deer they walk up to it after they high five themselves and all this and that they take pictures of it well if you open up this app which is my wildlife harvest and you create an event you can take a picture of that deer it's actually as long as you have service it will actually put a dot on a map where you have and it will Put an address in there. Now, the address sometimes ain't exactly because if you park on, we'll say, 13 uh, Main Street and you walk out in the woods and you shoot a deer, it may read 24 Main Street where you shoot the deer because it's not, you know, you're in the woods. Yep, I understand But that. anyways, after that, after you've, take, after you've taken a picture, well, of course, you got to put in there, you know, like how many you shot. You just fill it in one, and then you can make notes. You can write this unlimited amount of space for notes. Anything you want to write about the deer, a story, anything, take that picture, then you submit it, and you have it. It's in your system now. So when you get home, you can even take more pictures. You can go into it, into the event. You it, Instead of going into create an event, you go into my events, and you click on that. And you can edit it. You can add more notes. You can add more pictures. That's what's nice about it. The other part after that is it has a category. Well, it has a tab in there. This is something that I got to figure out. This is only the second time I've ever used Zoom. But I want to be able to figure out how I can share it and show it when I talk about it. Yeah. But, but on my uh, website, mywildlifeharvest.com website, I've got a bunch of videos that explains how it works. But you can, after it's done, we'll say, you know, this was just created this year. It just got done in August, so it's fairly new. And if you want to take the time, you can always add deer that you've shot in the past. So later on, you can click on deer gun, and it will tell you how many deer you shot in the past. It'll have a count for your history, so all the years. And it'll have one for, like, I've already shot six deer this year. But I shot five with a, with a bow, and I've shot one with a gun. So if I go into my deer archery and I click on it, I put the four deer that I shot last year. So it'll say a lifetime count, nine, and this year, five. So mm -hmm. if I want to go look at the pictures of just the deer that I shot with an archery, there's a category where you just go and click on images, and then you scroll down to the category you want and click on deer archery. And it's going to show all the deer you shot with an archery that you entered in this app. So it's not like your phone where you have to 
you know, scroll down through the pitches and try yeah. to find them. You With this app, you don't have to do that. You can just click on deer, archery, and it'll show you all the deer that you've entered into that category. Awesome. It's, a, it's the same for every category. Now, on the other side of that, you can click on your events that you've created over your lifetime or however long you've had this app. And if you click on deer archery in the event category, it's going to show you all the events that you've created for your deer over the years. And it'll, you can just scroll down and it's going to have the date and the year that you entered that event. And if you want to go look at that one, you can click on that one and you can read up all the notes you put in it and all, any of the pictures you've added. So that's that's what makes it nice. It kind of like categorizes everything for you so you don't have to search through your phone for that. Awesome. And the other thing is with this app, and you can't do this on a phone because you take a picture, but with this app, you have the ability to make notes. And it also has the position or the, the GPS place where you shot it and an address. Yep. So that's what this app is. Basically, it's a diary. I know I didn't call it a diary, call it a journal. I don't, I debate, I debated what to name it because a lot of people don't like diaries or relate diaries to hunters and stuff. So I created it uh, and made the my wildlife harvest name. And yeah. I advertise it as a journal when I've advertised it and stuff. But it's fairly new. It is really. I consider inexpensive considering what people do, what hunters spend on uh, on toys that they – have you ever bought – I asked somebody this. Have you ever bought something for your hunting and never used it, whether it was a call or a lure? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I, I want that. I've got a couple guns in my gun safe that I bought. Hey, I'm going to hunt this, but I've never, I've never shot. I got a 6 yeah. five Creedmoor. That I, I was like, because I carry a seven mag or a two forty three. I've I've got a couple thirty out sixes, but it's like I've bought three or four other rifles. Yeah. Put scopes on them, and they're in the safe. Never been shot. Like, you know, got rounds for them. And my wife's like, really? I'm like, well, it's a good deal. And I thought I'd hunt. So I've wasted way more money on way like you know, and uh, but see, like I'm a I'm a person like I keep track of everything. Like in my phone right now in my notes. It has every hunt I've made this year, what the barometric pressure was, what the wind was, where I was sitting, what time I got there, what time I got out, if I saw deer, what time they came. Like, I'm, I'm a numbers person, and the way your app works, like being able to plug it all in with the picture of the harvest work, I like. But say you weren't successful, can you still add stuff into you it? Can, you can, right. Pack it completely? You Basically, you can create an event for anything. Say, um, say you go deer hunting, okay, and something special happens. You don't shoot a deer, but you know maybe a bobcat walked right up to you, or something. Basically, when you go into the create an event, you you got to put it under a category. That's okay. the, the only thing you got to do is pick a category, and then where it says the amount, you got to just put in a zero there. Okay. And then you and then down below you can go make notes. And you can go and take pictures if you want to add some more pictures. So basically, yes. So basically, five years from now, you could go into if you, say you put that in gun deer deer gun. Yeah. You can go in. You can go into deer gun and you can just search for just put deer gun, and then scroll down to look for the year. That's the only thing you got to try to remember is you, you know, you're not gonna. It doesn't, it categorizes them by category and by year. Okay. So basically, all you got to do is, and if you don't remember the year, all you got to do is hit on deer gun, and it's going to show you all the deer guns events you've created. Okay. And then if you can't remember, all you got to do is say, well, we're going to go back to 2020 and click on this one here on, we'll say November 18th, which today is the date. Yes. And if it's not the one, then maybe... You might have had another one in 2018 and 2020 around that same time. And then you can read up on it. Yep. So you don't, yeah. it's, it, it categorizes it. I mean, it does need a little bit of searching. I mean, it doesn't, you can't define everything. Right. But yeah, you can, you can enter anything. I mean, if you went on a hunt, you know, uh, 
a special hunt, say you went elk hunting out west or something and you didn't get nothing, you can you can create an event for your elk hunt and then just put zero in there for you didn't get one. So you yeah. just put zero but in there. You can use it just like a regular diary or our journal, right. whatever whatever floats their boat to call it. Um right. and that's because I I doing um like I've been in construction my whole life with road companies, so we have to journal our, our diary, everything yeah. goes on. So I don't really care what you call it, but I have to document everything. So I do the same thing with my hunts and I, I tournament bass fish. So like I've got logs of, you know, I'll go, I, I could probably pull a binder out somewhere in here in the shop and it'll be from say 2018 to 2023, five to seven. And it might be, I might have more years for some places of, you know, say Sam Rayburn in Texas, every tournament that I can get that's got public information and you go through there and like, and I've logged it. So I know, well, that, that is, it's going to take this to average this, da, 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 da. like I'm a numbers person. So that's why I asked that, but like converting it over to the hunting side is like deer, deer are reputative, they repetition. So like, yeah. usually like, say you have a picture or you make a hunt and there's a decent buck comes out and it's November the 7th within the following year, within 24 to 48 hours, he's usually going to make the same appearance if he hasn't got killed. And that's, yeah. so if you have that, like you're talking about, and that's, and use it not just for the harvest, but just as a journal in general, it, it categorizes everything where you know exactly what dates you saw stuff. Um, can you import like pictures? Like, yeah, I guess you, you said you're good. Like if you had a picture that was there, can you, that you already had on your phone, can you move it to that app? Yes. When you go to the, once you've created an event or after you've edited it, you can just go in and add a picture. And when it's when it when it when you click on add a picture, it will say take a picture okay. or from your phone. Okay. And then you just then you, you just click on the phone. I yep. mean on the one for the phone, and you just have to find it and then submit it. You know, you have to submit it after. And that's the thing that a few people haven't done is after they've done it, they you gotta scroll down a little bit more and you gotta hit submit. Because if you don't submit it, it's not gonna save it for you. Makes sense. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not a lot of people before I decided to do this, because I mean, I sunk quite a bit of money into having it develop is not a lot of people are like you. I never I, I can look. I got records of the bears I've shot in my lifetime because I've shot probably close to 20. And but deer, I never kept records. Turkeys, I never kept records. So this is more I mean, yeah, any age can use this, but I'm finding out that the younger groups, the younger generation is taking this on more than the older generation. Just because some of the people, I'm 67, so some of the people my age says, you know, I never kept records up until now, so why should I bother now? But Right. That's what, um, you know, like, my, dad, my dad's uh, 65, and probably the last four or five years, he can tell you how many dairies killed, but other than that, he, you know, I don't know, didn't keep track of it. I've always kept track. I, I've got every deer that I've ever killed, the location I killed it, the time I killed it, like date and time frame, usually with if I can get it in there and what gun I used. And just, and then um, I've got a list for my sons are the same way. And when my daughter gets big enough to kill her, she'll have her list. I've, but not everybody's like that. And like I said, I can be a little, I, I'm kind of like Rain Man at time when it comes to numbers and, rep and repetitive patterns. Yeah. I like to track all that because to me, it just makes it up. If it, you know, like we do stuff in repetitive patterns, animals do it too. So it's like, you know, like I got horses, it's 120. They know about three o'clock every day they get fed, right? Yeah. And a 40 acre pasture. About 215, you walk out there and they're going to be lined up at their buckets, waiting, you know, 45 minutes to an yeah. hour at a time. Deer, deer know what time the acorns fall on certain trees. They know, like, if there's persimmons, what time they're going to be right. They know what they want. And like, once you get that documentation and, like like I said, you're, the way you've got this app developed, if you really want to put the time in and move pictures for, like, trail cameras are there where it ate and all that, you would have exact – it's easier to document everything. Right. Look at it and it's tracked in order. Like, And I, yeah. I know I'm probably looking at it from a – like a, a big numbers perspective, but it, it narrows it all down into a section there. Like, 
So you know, like, okay, this is when this was happening and why. So the following year, the same time frame should be there. And um, I'm probably looking into it in a different way. I'm looking at it and so just as a harvest calculator, how you could actually use it to, to actually help help you harvest animals. Like, yeah, you know? the, the thing is, the thing is, there's a lot of, well, there's a lot of hunting apps that will, that you can actually do that with, you know, some of that already. Some yeah. of them, they don't, some of them, they don't allow you to do notes. But get back to my app. When you do create an event, mm -hmm. it's going to save. Well, when you walk up to that deer and take a picture of it, it's going to tell you the time and the date. Yep. So that's one thing that you don't have to put in the notes because it's it's already there. Yeah. The date is, the time is. The and like I said, the only bad thing that we've encountered with this app is right now, and we haven't figured this out, is you have to have service to use it. If you're if you if you're you know hunting in wilderness where you don't have service, yes, it won't it won't work. So that's the only bad thing about it. But if you shoot, let's say you go elk hunting in Wyoming and you're out there and you don't have service, you can still take pictures of your phone, and you could actually, and I don't know how to do this because I'm not that smart yet. But when you take a picture with your phone, it actually most of the phones unless they're set up different, it will actually put in the GPS. Yep. Location. So when you get back into town and you have service, you can actually go and enter that GPS. Well, you can't enter the GPS coordinates. You have to enter an area. But and we've we debated whether to put the GPS coordinates in there, but it's just a money thing right now. But you can go and create that event and then download all the pictures. See, you can adjust the time and the date okay. so you can. You know, if you shoot this, if you shot this five days ago, you can go when you create the event, you can go and put the date five days ago and you can put in the time that you shot it if you want. So there is some flexibility when you don't have service, but unfortunately you need service to be able to use the app. But yeah. if you can, if you can document or remember when you shot it, the time and the date, you can enter that in when you create the event. Okay. Um, and, talk about, go ahead. Sorry. And that's that's one of the advantages of the app where, you know, when you create something, you can create it, overdo it or underdo it. There is one more section, but it's between eight, five and eight thousand dollars to add. And yeah. that's be able to and that's instead of only pictures to be able to add videos. At this point, I need sales before I'm going to go spend another five to eight thousand dollars to add that. <laughs> That's another thing I'm saying. App development's not cheap. Either. No, it's not. And you know, that's it takes a little time and everything because like we've looked at some stuff like on this end, like with what I do of develop having an app developed, and I'm like, you better be ready to sink some money and hope that it works. Let me tell you something. I'll give you a little piece of advice. I had this I, made in I had this made in India. Okay. And if you ever want to have something done. You should you should write this down. Just do a search for the word Upwork, U P W O R K, and there's another one. I can't think of the name of it. There's another one. This is based out of California, and they they anybody that's a freelancer that wants to sign up for that, I'm sure they must have to pay or something. Yes, they can. That that company backs everything that they that's on there. When I posted that I wanted an app made, and I posted it on there because somebody told me about that site. I think I had like 45 people all over the world okay. that said, hey, I can build that for you. And, you know, and I told and I was up front with people and I says, you know, I mean, I had some that were outrageously priced and some that were cheap. And I says, look, I, says, I don't know what this is going to cost. So I don't like a flat fee because yep. I says I've never had a net built. And I says, I know in my mind what I want built. But I says, as it gets built. I'm going to probably change some stuff or add something. So that's why I maybe spent more than if I'd assigned a contract by for a set price where I signed a contract by the hour instead and paid yes. a flat, flat hourly rate. And I felt better doing that because I didn't want somebody to build it. And, you know, because this company that I originally taught, they said they could build it for six thousand dollars, 
as a contract price. Well, I can tell you, I went with them, but we didn't go with a contract price and it cost me twice what they had estimated to begin with. So, you know, but that company is a good company because they okay. stand behind there, anybody that's on there. You don't pay anybody in India. The money goes to this company in California. It's Upwork is in California. And then they actually pay the, the people instead of, and I'm sure they probably take a commission. Yeah. I know I have, I know I had to pay a commission on it. I mean, if they billed me for $400, um, I think I paid like $420 or something, $23. I don't remember what the yeah. exact amount. They charge in a percentage on both sides probably. Oh, I'm sure they are. And uh, I'm sure those people, yeah, that's how they're making money. Yep. So, but yeah, I, a lot of, you know, into it. I appreciate you telling me that because I'll look into it because that's actually, you know, and, um, but yeah, that's what but, I want to see. Cause like I, I saw it the other day and I reached out to you cause I'm like, I'm a, I'm a person that I, I track everything. Like I said, and like I can be, uh, I can overdo it sometimes with tracking, like when, and uh, it's just because, like, do it. I'm, like I said, I do road. Con I do construction. I've built roads for yeah. Thirty nine. I've been doing it since I was nineteen. So, you know, twenty years of experience of you track everything. Whether we're doing asphalt, concrete, dirt, whatever, you have to track everything. So yeah. And before that, I did outside sales while I was in college for AutoZone. So you had to track everything there too. So and I've always been a numbers person. So like I saw this, I read a little bit about it. I'm like, oh yeah, this definitely is like in a my like I want to know about it because like it's a it's it's it, you know you're tracking it, and that's that's the thing. Like I like to have it and uh, like keep all my information goes. It's you know I don't. It's an infatuation, I guess, at times, and know that well I can fall back and look at it and be like, oh well, this is what was happening on that date, or I'm super competitive, so I look at well this is the earliest I've ever killed a deer. I I need to kill one before then. You know, and like yeah. right now, I think my earliest date's November the fourth, and that was last year. Well, this year I didn't, I didn't beat my date, so now I'm like, crap, I gotta wait all the way to next year to beat my date now. So like, it's just one of those weird things. Like I, I'm competitive in everything I do, even like with myself. Like if if I'm trying to throw rocks in a bucket, I'm griping at myself because I missed the bucket. Like I'm so like this fits right into my wheelhouse of like, oh, it, it makes tracking it easier and everything. And it's like, it um. The thing about the GPS on the pictures too, like with your regular phone, something I'll tell you, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Like say somebody sends you a picture of a bug or that they have, if, yeah. if it's not a screenshot of something else, like if they literally took it with their phone and send it to you, it will give, if you, you can swipe into it in the, in the camera roll and it will give you the GPS coordinates of where they took that picture at. Like, oh, I, I know that, but I'm not that smart. I just got a smartphone. I've only had a smartphone for about a little over a year. Hey, it's the, the reason I'm saying it's like two of my buddies that I hunt with all the time. We're always cutting up. One of them went on a trip the other day with some other guys to Kentucky to public land. Yeah. And it was like, they were real secretive about it and everything. And then they sent us some pictures. So I swipe up, then I sent it back to them. I was like, hey, that's where you're at on public land. They're like, wait, how'd you do that? And I'm like, it's like three of them are nurses, two are like they're all they're they're educated. I'm like, how did you not know your smartphone would do that? Like, you know, like they're all young, they're younger than me. And I'm laughing because I was like, How did any of these did y'all send out? Like that y'all they killed a couple of nice deer and they're like, Oh crap, I hope not everybody knows that. And I'm like, they've been going up here for like five years to this area they go and not telling anybody where they're at. It's a group of like four or five of them, I'm like, dude, like really? So but yeah, but you better not. You gotta know how to do that, though. I mean, I don't yep. know how to do that yet. Yep. I'll I'll, I'll learn with time. The other yep. thing I will tell you about this app is, if you lose your phone, you buy another phone. You don't lose any of this information. It's all held in a cloud, just like. Just like a normal app, you just re-download right. the app, on your new phone, and sign into it. I, I think right. it's password protected or like you sign right. it to your account. Yeah. Um. All right. Something that I would have a question about. And, um. I don't know if I should ask it. Go ahead. I learned this a long time ago. If you don't know the answer to a question, you should oh, ask it. Right, right. But like, I don't want to. I don't want to make it where there's a loophole too. Like, say I had it, and can I sign into it on like two different? You understand what I'm saying? Two different phones, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. You well, can sign in. You can. Yeah, you can look at this. On your friend's phone, but you gotta just 
because you're going to need your password and you're going to need, uh, you know, you have to download that app onto their phone. Okay. And then you're going to have to go and sign in with your name and your password. Your username and password. The reason I'm asking is like, if it's a username and password, you could put it on this phone and several people could sign into it. And which is not cool. Uh, but okay. If- so I'm going to answer that. We didn't make this shareable. That's what so, I was trying to. Yeah. So basically, and that the thing is, that's another cost. Yep. <laughs> um, if you write, and we're looking into that, but as I told the developer, I says, I need a year or so to see what this does. Yep. But yes, this could be shareable with any of your friends if you want it, but we, it's not shareable right now. Well, I, so I don't think you, I want it shareable. That's why I was asking. Well, From, if it's share, if it's shareable, it's only going to be shareable with whoever you choose. But I can tell you this, okay? You know how when you take a picture with your camera, mm-hmm. you can you can send it to somebody with a in a message or a text. If you take any of the pictures that you have in your app, this my app, my wildlife harvest app. You can actually share it with your friends. You just click share, and basically it's going to bring up your message. How do you want to share it? And you can text it to somebody. Okay. But you can't share your account. Nobody's going to be able to see your account. Okay. The only – and on my end as a developer, what I can see on my end is the name of the person that created the account. And some people don't even use their – Real name, huh? <laughs> real name. But <laughs> – they do have to do one thing. I can see their email and their phone number that they created the account with. Okay. Um, and it's something that it's because they don't want somebody to create an account with the same email or phone number. Okay. And so, and it gives me the ability to email all these customers and ask them, you know, any feedback. Yeah, feedback. Uh, I haven't done it. I've only got 49, 56 customers right now that have actually downloaded it and registered. Mm-hmm. Some of them just did, so they, I haven't reached the, they haven't reached the 30 days where they paid. Some have paid. I've had nine that, yeah, no, I've had eight people that's passed the 30 days that didn't pay, and I emailed them and asked them why, and I only got one reply, and they said that it just didn't interest them. Okay. So I basically I'm looking for feedback. You know, um, most of the people that have it um, that I've emailed or actually have an email, the ones I've talked with our friends, most of them love it and stuff. I mean, not everybody's going to love this. Not everybody's going to want it, but it's for whoever wants it. No, I understand. And uh, it's it it seems like it would be, like I said, helpful in a lot of ways, not just in the after the fact. You know, like if you, if you, if you go about it using it the correct way, you you can utilize it to get a lot of information pulled into an area. And that's what I like about the way it is playing out. Um, so my, I guess my question is, uh, I, now we're going to, we got the rundown of what it is. And, um, how long ago did you decide to, you said it, it got hit, hit the market about August is what, what it was a couple months back. This, this app that finished the last part of August, it's only been out, um, before that it was, I mean, I had, testers that was testing it as it was being built but the actual finalized app as it is right now was done i think like the 28th of august so i just matter of fact i just hired a advertising agency a company to start advertising it and i only hired them the last week of october so everything that i got before that was just through facebook and i mean i would think that I'm surprised that more people didn't download it and at least look at it. But I mean, I posted it on a bunch of hunting sites, you know, on Facebook and, yes. you know, some of them have 40, 50,000 members, but I found out that 40, 50,000 members, it's sometimes there's only a few hundred of them that are actually right. look at stuff, Yep. you know, and stuff. Uh-uh, all right. Well, so, uh, that, that hits where what I wanted to do on the app. Then I ask everybody, Few questions. Um, who 
got you into hunting? Was it you own your own? Was it a family thing? Who was your? My father, my father hunted. I, I mean, I went hunting with him in Maine. You have to be 10 to buy a license and hunt in Maine. Uh -huh. but, but I went with my dad when I was probably seven or eight years old, tag along with him, you know, and stuff. And when I was 10, I bought a license and I've been hunting ever since. Yes, sir. Um, I shot, shot my first deer when I was 12 years old. Yes, yeah, sir. So that's, that's how I got into it. All right. Because my dad was a hunter. Makes sense. That's how I got into it. And um, then my kids are the same way. Then um, that, that's the important one. Then uh, I guess uh, hunting in Maine. I, so um, Maine moose, have you ever done it? Yeah. Actually, I shot one in 2010. And my, it's a lottery system. Yep. And I actually went hunting this year because my son got one and he shot one this year. Awesome. He shot one. In, he shot one in 2009. So 15 years later, he shot another one. Okay, well that answered my next question about the next generation and having kids and getting them involved in hunting. So you, you knocked out my three. Um, what I'd like. But I'll tell you this. I will tell you this though. I I know you got. You said you have a daughter that's getting. I don't know how old she is, but I know well, you said something about boys getting her are into hunting. And 10, so I've been my working. son. I didn't pressure my son. Yep. He didn't want to deer hunt. Um, and I didn't pressure him. He was 12 when he first, when he decided to go deer hunting. He did shoot a deer the first day, but he didn't want to hunt when he was 10 and he didn't want to hunt until he was 11. But, so I didn't pressure him. That's, that's, how my, that's how my boys are. My 10 year old has hunted since he was eight and loves it. My 12 year old has been a couple of times. He doesn't like it. He'll go sit yeah. in the box stand with you a little bit. He would rather fish. My 10 year old, I saddle hunt. My 10 year old has a saddle and hangs out the opposite side of the tree as me and we're in the same tree together and we hunt. It doesn't matter yeah. the weather, he's going to go. My four-year-old, she she loves the, her the idea of hunting right now is we sit on the four-wheeler or the, or the truck and we watch the wood line in the field here at the house and she's hunting and she's spending time with daddy. So I'm I'm working, you know, so. Yeah. And, uh, so that's what, when I said I had to come down here to the shop to record a podcast, she was like, me go? Start trying to put her boots on. I was like, no, baby, got to record a podcast. Um, Give us the... um. When they go like to down, see the app, is it My Wildlife Harvest? Just type that in in any app supplier or what? It's in Apple Store and it's in Google Store. Now, if they don't want to search for it, they uh -huh. can just go to mywildlifeharvest.com website. Okay. And I've got the I've got the link to the Apple and the Android links right on that page. All right. And uh, that'll work. Any and um, can they? They can find, they can um, get all the information from your website or you have a Facebook page also under My Wildlife Harvest and all that because that's yep. where I saw it. Um, those are, um, any, it's, I'm trying to make sure I hit everything because I want to make sure I put your information out. Uh, MyWildlifeHarvest.com or My Wildlife Harvest on Facebook and that you can get all the information you need from either one of those. Um, so and you've, you've told us everything it does, and that's what I wanted to get it out there and explain it to everybody. Because like I, I was intrigued when I found, saw it and reached out to you, and uh, I'm I'm gonna end up downloading it. I just haven't done it yet because like my I think I reached out to you Friday, and uh it's been it's been a hectic couple of days. My, um, my I got a new neighbor that just moved in down the road from me, and he's been cleaning this and moving this, and like come see this, come see that. So I've been helping him set up deer stands and already deer season helping him so it's been a hectic weekend like when you messaged me a while ago i was like about the link i was like oh crap i didn't do it like so i appreciate it because i would have i would have forgotten looked like a jackass and i apologize for that <laughs> so I, let me ask you this how did you hear about my app i saw it on uh, facebook under where i guess you'd um advertised it so i reached out to you to give you another platform of being able to advertise it because that's that's you know like hey you know come on here and talk about it because I like, I want to know about it, but that way all my listeners that may have not have seen it will hear about it. So, yeah. I, you know, that way, because it's the easiest way for me to learn about it, to talk to you about it. And if you're going to talk to me about it, we might as well record it and let everybody else hear about it too that wants to hear about it. So that's how I look at things. And, um, well, I do, I do know this and I don't know yet how to do it, but I know it would have been good if I knew how to do this, how I can share my screen and I could have sh I could have walked you through hey, but this you, is only the second time I've ever used zoom so when you learn how to do it let me know because I'm not entirely sure how to do it or I'd have tried to but uh let me know and uh, we'll get together and do another one and 
do it where where we can put all the like more information out. I'm you're you're welcome to be on any time. We don't have we can talk about this. We can talk about main moose hunting. We can talk about anything. I I just like to talk hunting and outdoors. So yeah, definitely anytime you want to hop on, you're more than welcome. We know how to contact each other now. Um, yeah, give me a second. I'm gonna start winding this one down for us, and um, we got all the information there that we need. And calls here. I think I did that. Pause, then I got one more thing to pause as soon as I find it, whatever I did. There we go. Now, I don't do the best on, uh, sometimes I'm not the best at uh, electronic devices either. So don't, don't, it, it ain't age, it's it's us. <laughs> I, sometimes oh. I have to, you know, like don't think because you're 67, like, and I'm, I'm 40, I, 39, about to be 40, that I know more. No, sometimes I have to go to my kids, like, what the heck? Is I was yeah, I was just going to say, go to your 12-year-old. They probably know more about it than I do. Uh, I come out and record a podcast one day, and it's never acted up, and, like, nothing would work. And I couldn't figure out what to do with it. I'm unplugging mics, switching mics, switching headphones. Nothing's working. He walks here. He's like, Dad, did you just try unplugging it? And I'm like, that is not what I should do. Like, you know, like, he unplugs it, plugs it back up. I'm like, you little, like, but, you know, that's what I should have did to start with, but I tried to do the right things, and it didn't work. Yeah. But, um. All right, well, we'll um, hop off of here, and I appreciate your time, buddy. Like, super. Yeah. Like, I, I said I, I'm gonna download it and um, play with it because uh, I en I enjoyed getting to learn about it, and I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, buddy. Bye bye. Bye.